All right, what is up? Uh, most of you don't know me. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at No More Parties, and I'm excited to be here. I'm excited, Nick. Uh, let me loose on the channel. I'm excited to bring some good content, get some takes off. So for my first video, uh, hopped on with Nick about a week ago. Got off some takes about Isaiah Spiller, who you know I think is probably the most overrated running back in this year's draft class. Um, but that was just kind of kind of a little taste. Didn't go very deep. So for my first solo vid, I wanted to get back on the horse, kind of expand on the ideas that I touched on there. So yeah, gonna dive a little bit deeper into Isaiah Spiller today. <laughs> First of all, I guess I'll just kind of retrace back and like the things that I like about Isaiah Spiller's profile. Honestly, there's there's quite a bit of them. So um, the first one is he's got like a workhorse size. He was listed at 6'1", 215 at Texas A&M this last year. He's probably going to be like six foot 220 um, right around there at the combine. So good workhorse size. Like he's a big back. Number two, he was productive. He broke out um, as a true freshman at Texas A&M, you know, big time program in the SEC to come in as an 18 year old and immediately be a big part of the offense is pretty impressive. He wasn't like super dominant. He didn't have you know, like a sh he didn't own a super large share of the Aggie offense, but you know, his, his dominator ratings in like the 48th percentile, which, you know, right around average, considering he played at such like a big time program was sharing time with other talented running backs, pretty solid. And he's an early declare. He only played three years at school. He's got an August birthday. So he's going to be like barely 21 when his rookie year starts. He's going to be 20 years old on draft night. And assuming he goes in, you know, the first or second round, um, he's going to be the youngest running back to be picked that high since Darren McFadden back in 2008. So we like our running backs to come into college young, a lot of tread left on their tires, you know, a lot of years left to, you know, stack up fantasy points. And he definitely does that. He broke out early. He's coming to the NFL early. Let's go. Um, second is that he is a good pass catcher. His career best target share number um, is 9.7%. It's in the 59th percentile, which is really nice. You know, he's a big back. You can also catch passes. So, you know, he can play on all three downs. And he wasn't just like catching dump offs. His average depth of target was almost a full yard, 0 0.7 yards which is a 64th percentile, you know, distance down the field that he's catching passes. So he's he's running actual routes. He's not just catching dump offs and screens. You know, he can actually go down the field a little bit and like make things happen. And he was used a lot in the passing game. He had, I think, 74 receptions throughout his career, which is in the 85th percentile. You know, he can catch passes. He can, he can play all three downs, dual threat kind of guy. You know, we like to see that. On the ground, he had a pretty big workload. You know, he wasn't overworked. He, he didn't ever have 200 carries in a season, but 541 for his career, which is like the 63rd percentile for almost 3,000 yards. He had just over 900 his freshman year. He went over 1,000 uh, his sophomore and junior seasons, and his yards per carry was right around five and a half um, in the 60th percentile, so pretty nice. And then lastly, you know, there's a lot of like smart film guys who really like what they see from Isaiah Spiller. He's a patient runner. He can make guys miss. He can run with power. I know Ray Garvin thinks he's got like underrated speed, so he's kind of, you know, a complete package from a, from a film perspective, and so because of that, like the NFL likes him. They wanted him to come out early. You know, he's probably going to be selected in the second round of the draft. He looks like a good football player. Now to the bad things. The problem with yards per carry is that it's difficult to compare players who operate in different environments. Like Isaiah Spiller, five and a half yards per carry at Texas A&M in the SEC. I don't know how that compares to, you know, whatever Brees Hall averaged at Iowa State in the Big 12. I don't know how it compares to whatever Kenneth Walker averaged, you know, for Michigan State in the Big 10. Even if they all averaged five and a half yards per carry, those three offenses are way different. Strength of schedule is way different. Those numbers mean different things in different offenses. So what I do to kind of try to combat that confusion is create a baseline from which to compare players. And so so I do that by looking at a guy's yards per carry relative to what the rest of the guys on his team did. And if you create that baseline, then you create a situation where you can compare players from team to team in the same idea as like market share numbers or dominator rating. You know, I don't know what, you know, a thousand receiving yards means at Memphis versus what it means at Alabama. But if you can see that, you know, a thousand yards is a 30% share of total passing yards at Memphis and it's you know, 40% at Alabama, you know, now we kind of level the playing field for comparing like raw counting numbers. Same idea with efficiency stats. So Isaiah Spiller's, you know, five and a half yards per carry at Texas A&M, 60th percentile, 
not bad. However, during that same time, his teammates were averaging 6.26 yards per carry, which means that his yards per carry relative to theirs was 0.73 yards per carry less. So he was averaging almost a full yard per carry less than the rest of the guys on his team. That's a 12th percentile number. So his raw yards per carry is in the 60th percentile relative to his team is in the 12th percentile. Similarly, if we look at his rate of 10 yard runs, just like how often is he reaching 10 yards on his carries relative to his teammates, uh, that's 15th percentile. And those are the third lowest and fourth lowest numbers in this entire running back class. He was a little bit better in the open field. The way that I like to measure like how good of an open field runner a guy is, is looking at his 10 yard carries, take all those. How often does he turn those into 20 yard runs? So he's already reached the secondary. How, how often is he like extending those runs even deeper downfield? And he did that at 31% clip, um, which is a 54th percentile performance. So Pretty solid, pretty average, but better than his like team relative stats in yards per carry and 10 yard run rate. So now we've established like he was not good relative to his teammates. Kind of begs the question, okay, how good were those teammates? You know, doing what he did at, you know, while he's playing with like the Monstars or something like, okay, maybe he shouldn't be more efficient than like the best players in the world. Where if he was playing at, you know, your local community college and he, you know, wasn't as efficient as the other guys in the team, he probably just sucks. So he played at Texas A&M, you know, good school. It's tough to quantify how good his teammates were. Um, I do it by looking at like their star rating as high school recruits. Based on a weighted average, the other running backs on his team averaged 3.72 stars coming out of high school, which is pretty damn good. Um, that's a 70th percentile like group of teammates. So he wasn't like, you know, being outdone by a bunch of scrubs. They're, they're a pretty solid group. You know, it's not intuitive that he averaged 0.73 yards per carry less than teammates in the 70th percentile. Like, that's hard to wrap your brain around. And so what I did was, in my whole database, which goes back to like 2007, every running back drafted since 2007, I looked at the last 10 years, so since 2012, the last 10 drafts, filtered for guys who averaged 10 carries per game in college. So if you weren't your team's lead back, like you were just removed from the sample, Spiller averaged about 15 carries per game. So kind of guys in the same range there and guys who played with teammates who averaged at least three stars as high school recruits and guys who averaged fewer yards per carry than those teammates so lead backs playing with good teammates less efficient than those teammates and since 2012 the list of guys who fit that criteria in addition to spiller are miles gaskin cyrus gray zach stacy joseph randall cameron artis Payne, paul perkins cadre Olison, james white Kadeem Carey, Smajay Pirine, Benny Snell, Trey Mason, Kristen Michael, Monte Ball, Bishop Sankey, TJ Yeldon, and Trent Richardson. Not a great group. Kind of not a good sign that, like, even though his teammates were good, he failed to be as efficient to them to the degree that he did. So, not a great look. I published a couple articles with those findings. Um, that's kind of the general way that I evaluate running back prospects. And the Isaiah Spiller stands, similar to how they did in the comment section of that first video with Nick, the Isaiah Spiller stands hopped all over my mentions with, okay, but you can't just use yards per carry because, you know, he's the lead back, he's seeing heavier box counts, the other running backs are used way differently... Like, it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, which those people aren't necessarily wrong. Like, those are all problems with yards per carry. Like, if, if Isaiah Spiller's good and my process is just missing him, like, I, I want to know that. So I looked into all of those things and kind of developed a new, new metric, I guess, for how I'm going to evaluate running back prospects going forward. And basically what I did was just the same idea of comparing their raw yards per carry, but I'm doing it at each box count. So against four-man boxes, against five-man boxes, against six-man boxes. There's a lot of research that points to defenders in the box before the snap being like a, a large determining factor in like the, the success of a given run play. And so if you can kind of just compartmentalize each of those performances against those box counts relative to teammates, you can kind of get a better idea of who's efficient relative to their teammates given the situations that they were carrying the ball in. So all that. I looked at Spiller's yards per carry against each box count. I looked at his teammates' yards per carry against each box count. And then you compare the two. A 100% would mean that Spiller was producing like exactly the output of his teammates. Anything above 100% would mean he's, you know, outdoing them by, you know, whatever percentage. Less than 100%, same thing, opposite direction. His box adjusted efficiency rating is what I'm calling it was 92.3%. So adjusting for, you know, the amount of defenders in the box, the average Isaiah Spiller carry was worth right around 92% of the average carry of every other running back on the team. That's a seventh percentile number. It's the fourth lowest in the class. Not good. On top of that, you know, kind of through that analysis, I found that 
the average box count for Isaiah Spiller was actually lighter than the average box count for the other running backs on the team. So those raw numbers, you know, his lower yards per carry, his lower 10-yard run rate, were actually done in easier situations to run than what his teammates were facing. Not a good look. So I uh, found that out, kind of wasn't satisfied there. I thought, okay, maybe Isaiah Spiller is actually better than those guys, actually more efficient, but he's like being used in a different way. You know, back to that usage argument. I found that he's, you know, not facing heavier box counts, but maybe he's being used in a different way, you know, than these guys are, where their their usage is just more conducive to like big plays or whatever. Maybe they're catching some jet sweeps, stuff like that. So I looked into that also. Not the case, based on like the, you know, the main kind of scheme run types that these guys are all are all handling. Isaiah Spiller's usage and the other guys in the team were basically the same. They had kind of five basic run types that were like the bread and butter of Texas A&M's uh, rushing attack. Those were inside zone, outside zone, stretch, counter, and ISO. Those are the five runs where Spiller had at least 10 carries and where the other guys as a collective had at least 10 carries. None of the other runs qualified. On stretch and ISO plays, Spiller was more efficient than the other guys. On inside zone, outside zone, and counter, he was less efficient. So, kind of a split. However, the stretch and ISO plays were just 19% of Spiller's total carries. So less than a fifth of his carries were on schemes where he was doing better than his teammates. Two thirds of his carries came on inside zone, outside zone, and counter. Those are the schemed runs where he was, you know, less efficient than the rest of his teammates. So on the main bread and butter plays that Texas A&M was running, Isaiah Spiller was seeing lighter box counts and he was less efficient than his teammates in those schemes against those box counts. I published those findings also, and people continued to jump in my mentions saying, okay, it's not about usage, it's not about box counts, it's simply that this dude Devin A. Chain on the team is super fast. You know, all the pro spiller arguments I'm seeing mostly have to do with Devin A. Chain. So this dude Devin A. Chain, he uh, joined the team in 2020, so a year after Spiller got there. He's one of these small dudes. He catches the ball. He's super fast, like really fucking fast. He's got like Olympic sprinter speed. So like these, these people aren't lying. The dude is fast. And, you know, kind of the theory is the reason Spiller's less efficient than these guys, or at least than A. Chain, who's kind of the other main running back, is because A. Chain is just so fucking fast. I thought, all right, How do I look into this? And I identified like three different areas that I could look into. Number one would be outside runs where hypothetically it's, that's where you would benefit the most from speed where like beating defenders to the edge is most important. A run up the middle speed's not going to, you know, give you as much of an advantage as like, you know, getting to the edge and turning the corner would. So outside runs. I looked into that as well. There were 21% of Spiller's total carries were classified as outside runs, Um, no matter what scheme they were, but they were, you know, designed to go to the outside. And on those plays, Spiller averaged 5.6 yards per carry, and the rest of the team averaged 5.3 yards per carry, like, collectively. So, on outside runs where I hypothesized that, like, speed would matter a lot, Spiller was more efficient than his teammates. It was a fairly small portion of his total runs, and he was more efficient than his teammates on those runs. So if the thought is that speed is a huge contributor to success on outside run plays, it's not really affecting Spiller's efficiency relative to everybody else. That's probably not the answer we're looking for, so outside runs, ignore that. On breakaway runs, like I talked about before, Spiller converted his 10-yard runs into, like, 20 or longer gains at 31%, which is a 54th percentile mark. Devin A. Chain was significantly better. He converted his at, like, a 39% clip, which is an 83rd percentile mark. He's just, like, blowing people out of the water, you know, in the open field. You know, that could be a source of wonky efficiency relative to each other, and one metric that kind of discounts the impact of long runs is true yards per carry. And basically what that is, is it takes any yard gained beyond 10 on a given play and like ignores it, pretends it doesn't exist. You know, normally in yards per carry, if I have one run for two yards and another run for 40 yards, I'm averaging 21 yards a carry. True yards per carry would give me credit for one carry for two yards and another carry for 10 yards. And so I'd be averaging, what is that, six true yards per carry. So it caps the impact of of each play at 10 yards. That way guys who are just kind of, their efficiency is fueled by these long gains aren't getting too much credit for it. So in theory, if that's the reason Spiller is less efficient than his teammates, he should have better true yards per carry probably if he's the better running back. Over his career, Spiller's true yards per carry is 4.02 yards. The true yards per carry of all the other running backs during Spiller's career is 4.31 yards. So even ignoring the impact of long runs, Spiller is less efficient than his teammates. Okay, 
I'm having a hard time like substantiating these claims that like Spiller is just inefficient because Devin A chain is really good or really fast. I thought of a third way to do it. Success rate is another metric, which it doesn't look at an average because like I just said, averages can be, you know, thrown off by like large gains. It looks at a binary good or bad on each play, like success, failure on each run. Success would be defined as gaining 40% of the yards needed on first down. I believe 70% of the yards needed on second down and 100% of the yards needed on third or fourth down. So if it's second and 10 and you gain three yards, failure. If it's third and two and you gain three yards, success. So it kind of normalizes things for situation. Um, these guys who come in and just play on like third and 13 and take a draw for eight yards. Yeah, they're averaging eight yards a carry, but they're not helping their team. Those guys look bad on success rate. So in theory, this should help Spiller. So I looked into it. Spiller's success rate over the course of his career was 6% lower than the collective success rate of his teammates. So he's handling the same types of runs, he's seeing lighter box counts, and he's averaging fewer yards per carry, he's succeeding on a smaller percentage of his runs, having a hard time like finding a way that he's supposedly actually good relative to his teammates, when all the pro spiller arguments, I can't find data to back them up. And this all ignores the fact that like if you if we pretended Devin A-Chain didn't exist, like we just Thanos snap him out of the universe, Devin A-Chain never stepped foot on the A&M campus, never played football for the Aggies, and we were just comparing Isaiah Spiller's efficiency to the other guys on the team, his yards per carry average would be 0.3 better than theirs, so he's now more efficient than his teammates, but that 0.3 is still just a 41st percentile number relative to every running back drafted since 2007, and his 10-yard run rate is still 1.8% lower than theirs, which is still a 22nd percentile number relative to every running back drafted since 2007. So even ignoring all the Devin A-Chain stuff, even if we say, okay, yes, Devin A-Chain is unique, don't compare Spiller to Devin A-Chain, got it, he still is not good relative to the other guys. But like, the thing I keep coming back to, like, I I'm done with the numbers. The thing I keep coming back to with like this whole thought process is even if we say that De Devin A-Chain is like so fast that we should give Spiller the benefit of the doubt, like we should asterisk his evaluation. If he's that good, like shouldn't we have given like TJ Yeldon the benefit of the doubt when he was less efficient than Derrick Henry and the other guys at Alabama? Shouldn't we have given Samaj P. Ryan the benefit of the doubt when he was less efficient than Joe Mixon and the other guys at Oklahoma? Shouldn't we have given Lendale White the benefit of the doubt when he was less efficient than Reggie Bush at USC? Elijah Holyfield played with Sony Michelle and DeAndre Swift was less efficient than those guys at Georgia. Monte Ball was very similar to Isaiah Spiller, was like full package, big dude, big program, thousand yard rusher every year. He was less efficient than Melvin Gordon and, and you know, the collective rest of the guys at Wisconsin. If we're going to give Isaiah Spiller the benefit of the doubt, then all those guys should retroactively get the benefit of the doubt. But that doesn't make sense because we know that they weren't actually good. Like we shouldn't have given them the benefit of the doubt. So using the context of those guys from the past, I'm sitting here now with Isaiah Spiller are like, okay, why should I give him the benefit of the doubt? Is Devin A-Chain better than Derrick Henry? Is he better than Joe Mixon and Reggie Bush? I mean, maybe, but I'm a little skeptical of that, so I'm inclined to, like, stand solid with the idea that Isaiah Spiller is just overrated, he looks good on film, he wasn't actually efficient in college, and I guess to kind of conclude, like, he's gonna be one of the top probably two or three running backs taken in this draft, he's gonna go probably in the second round, and that draft capital is really important for especially, like, projecting fantasy points, and he's gonna get an opportunity, you you know, he's big. He can play on all three downs. He was productive in college. There's a lot of good things to like about him. It honestly might not even matter. Like if he goes to a team with a good offensive line, a good quarterback, a good offensive system, he could be efficient, you know, despite maybe not inherently being that good of a running back. And he could be like a productive fantasy guy anyway. It's hard to predict situations. It's hard to predict all that outside stuff. All I can do is like, look at these guys as players. And based on the numbers I'm seeing, Isaiah Spiller is very scary in like, you know, the top half of rookie drafts. I'm scared he's Monte Ball. I'm scared he's Trent Richardson. I'm scared he's just gonna flame out. And I'm not using, you know, the 103 on a dude who might be the next Monte Ball. So it's kind of where I'm at. I think that about does it. Appreciate anybody who's stuck around. Not sure where, you know, kind of what sort of analysis I'll, I'll do going forward. It'll all be running back stuff. I don't know shit about anything but running back. So hope you guys liked it. See you next week.